What's up, subscribers and tribers? This is Swiss Milk of Puppy Kisses bringing you the fourth part of my Hoff tutorial series. I'm uh, super excited to be doing this part on chaining. It's one of the most requested things um, that I've gotten for my Hoff tutorial series. If you do have suggestions for the next part of the tutorial series, please leave a comment. I always read through all the comments. Um, so we're going to be talking about a lot of things. We're going to be talking about uh, your basic requirements for chaining at a competitive level, how to set up your mouse and mouse pad, how to set up your in-game settings, uh, the method behind chaining, and then I'm going to show uh, hopefully a lot of chaining footage so you guys can all watch it and learn from it, and uh, I'll put in some comments and kind of talk over some footage, uh, and then we'll just wrap it all up in the end. If, uh, if you have any questions at the end of this tutorial or things that I didn't talk about, once again just leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll get to it eventually and make a response video. So uh, getting into the basics, the basic requirements for chaining at a competitive level. All right, uh, you're going to want a ping less than 70. At best, you're going to want a ping less than 30. You're going to need an adjustable DPI mouse, preferably a, a large mouse pad, and uh, preferably greater than or equal to 60 frames per second, and you want this to be stable, whichever number it is. There is a way that you can uh, you can limit how much uh, deep or frames per second you want. Um, that's not very important, but if you are having problems uh, getting your frames per second higher, then I will link below uh, my INI that I use. So uh, your setup for uh, your mouse and mouse pad. In general, you want your DPI to be less than a thousand, and you want your in-game sensitivity to be less than or equal to ten. Um, and also, in general, a 360, uh, as far as the distance you have to travel on your mouse pad, should be less than or equal to the width of your mouse pad. Now, there is a uh, option optional way to kind of set up a chaining DPI either if you have an adjustable DPI button on your mouse or there's a script which I'll put in the uh, description below where you can uh, you can set it so that once you start chaining uh, your DPI lowers um, and then in that case you you know this 360 less than or equal to with your mouse pad thing doesn't really apply anymore um, that's it's pretty basic. Uh, a basic requirement on like you know how large do you need to have your mouse pad? I would say in general you want uh, it to be at least a foot, if not larger. Um, as far as uh, your DPI though, that's like a I get tons of questions on this. Like what DPI is good? What do I need? What do people use? What's best for chaining? You know that's that's going to be uh, as far as what you're comfortable with. Um, but I found a very, very good comprehensive, if not overly comprehensive, guide on your DPI and what it should be as far as for gaming and for FPS gaming. Um, and I'll put that link below and you guys can check that out on your own time because uh, I, I went through it all and I set it up just how I like it. And it does take a while, but it's well worth it at the end. As far as in-game settings go, there's a couple things you want to look at. Well, first off, this is where you change your in-game mouse sensitivity, and I run at 10, but that's only because I use a very low DPI of about 400. Um, you want your uh, field of view to be 120 degrees, so change that. I think it defaults to 90. And if you haven't watched my other videos, you want to turn simulated projectiles off, so you want to disable that. As far as the method of chaining goes, uh, there's a couple basic things. The general theory is that you want to lead the target and match the motions they do before they're going to do them. So you need to predict their motions and lead at the same time depending on their speed. Now there's a couple of things you can do to make this easier for you. One is to use your W, A, S, and D keys as well as your jets and ski to match their movement as best you can. So if you had a target that was kind of arcing from left to right here, uh, instead of having to uh, you know, really match their uh, up and down motion, what you could do is jet and go like this, and just jet up and match their, match their fall, and then you don't really have to mess with your up and down, and you can focus uh, your accuracy on left to right. Um, and you know, there's many times where you're not going to be able to match it perfectly, but even so much as jetting a little bit to the left, if someone's going to the left in your chaining, that can make a big difference in the end.
As far as uh, your posture goes, you want to have a good posture. You know, you want your your, arm, your legs at 90 degrees. You want your shoulders to be relaxed. Your arm to re be relaxed. You want a stable uh, but firm grip on the mouse, and you want to let your eyes do the work when you're chaining. Once you get to a good point in chaining where you've practiced a lot with a friend and you've gone through the other steps that I'll mention later uh, after we go over the footage, um, you know you're going to let your eyes do most of the work with this and kind of you know put it to muscle memory and then you shouldn't be thinking about oh how much should I be leading them am I leading them enough um, and if you are having problems getting your chain to start I'll go over this more later but if you are having problems getting your chain to start there's a good chance that your eyes and your hand just aren't calibrated if you if, if I can put it in that term to each other so I would stop your chain uh, rather than trying to keep going just for a brief instant and then start it again uh, after you've moved your hand a little bit and maybe that will fix it. So without further ado I'm going to uh, to run some in-game footage and uh, we can uh, we can talk about that. Hopefully what, we, what you should be paying attention to in this footage is uh, is how my cursor moves with their movement. Um, you know if I'm moving left or right at the same time, how I'm using my jets and uh, and how much I'm leading them in different circumstances based on their speed and just kind of watch this and go to get, get a good idea of what it should look like when you try to do it. If you match how I do it as far as how it looks or, uh, or how much I'm leading them just visually, if you can get a good sense of that, that will help you way more than you expect. So uh, without further ado, let's go over the footage. Congratulations, you've made it to the footage. I broke this section into three parts. The first is on uh, matching enemy movement, the second is on dueling, and the third is on hitting cappers and long distance chain. For each one of the clips I'm going to show here, I'll show the entire clip without me talking over it, and then I'll slow down the important bits and point out some nuances that you might not have noticed. Now I would recommend that you go back and watch this section in the future. I'll put a hot link to it in the bottom uh, for your ease. So sit back and enjoy. I'll probably gonna take Maybe get a bad shot. Hit him on. Watch the heavy one. He's one hit. He's killed that heavy. I'm dead. He's down. He's down. So as mentioned, you want to jump with the target, keep his movement, and match it. And then really afterwards, you don't have to move your mouse at all. Return. Hit on me. I'm going down. Oh, he's one shot. Damn it. Notice when I sweep back and forth vertically across the target to get the most hits. Shit. Oh, I don't know. We need crash, 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 crash. Bombs on that. We should get this though. Got it. We have the soldier's flag. Alright, guys, let's try to keep this live. To engage this light target at medium distance, I choose to match its horizontal velocity in order to get the most hits. Intercepted by JP. Chain him out. He's down. Hey, let me One grab, more. Let me grab this. Heavy. Oh, that was a heavy. Never mind. We're ammo chasing. We should have this. The stance not quite clear though. Thomas is here. He's down. Never mind. Can you return? Be careful. They have a crash up front. They have a cap right on the right. He's down. Can you return? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take this. Take oh, this. Oh, oh, no, don't run away. I 400. Come back down. When chasing and chaining a target in front of you at medium range. You often don't need to move your mouse very much, but small adjustments are required. Notice the subtle changes in my cursor position as I lead this target. I come in fast then. Three down from tongue. Uh, right to front, I guess. Watch for if grab then. The have our flag. When engaging an oncoming airborne target, it is often best to attempt to match your vertical velocity with theirs. One way of achieving this is to hop as they reach the apex of their height, and then chain, keeping your cursor in relatively the same spot as you fall. Nice. Everybody, everybody. I'm gonna return. Return, return now, return, return, return. 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 Coming in, heavy, coming in. Here the same method is used. Oh, oh my god, I got it. Oh, left to right, right, left to right now, left to right now. Nice. 
That's bullshit. They don't have anyone on it. Let me grab this. Oh, oh, oh come on, pick, pick it up. We need return on that. Nice. When chaining at long distances, if your target is moving directly away from you, subtle movements of the mouse in a figure eight or circle can sometimes lead to a hit. Crossfire! Alright, well that was pretty much uh, all I had for my chaining tutorial as far as footage goes. Uh, just a few, few more things as far as how you can improve. Um, practice, practice. That's pretty much all I can tell you. You know, find a dueling buddy and just do a chain with him all day. One other thing that I didn't mention is uh, is keeping your chain your chain wound up. So this normally applies for chain guns. All I'm doing here is I'm tapping the mouse button. What that means is that when I want to start chaining, I just have to hold it down. It's a lot faster than starting from cold. You can do this as well with uh, the juggernaut with his chain. It also has a chain of time. So I'm just clicking. And I can start chaining whenever I want. Well, that's pretty much it. If you found this video helpful or interesting or maybe funny in some sick way, uh, please like and subscribe for more stuff. I'm going to be coming out with uh, more tutorial videos. I'm also going to be starting to do some funny stuff, hopefully, just messing around with the guys and uh, showing you kind of what I do when I'm not trying to try hard all the time playing competitive and professional league games. So uh, that should be cool. So stick around. Uh, subscribe to my channel for updates and more videos. Thanks, everyone. This is Swiss Milk signing off.